that's a, <laughs> for sure. That's good music, yeah. I guess she does she needs dancing. <laughs> she, she's got her dance down. We're, we always let our guests uh, invent their own dance. Uh. I only have one patented movie off. Here it comes. Here, here, here it comes. Ready? <laughs> all right. That's my move. That's all I got so far. That's really cool. Let's everybody invent their own. Welcome back to Mita's podcast, Mita Unshackled. One day we need to explain to people why it, it, it is actually Mita Unshackled, but we can do that at a later date. We're here still at ICBC introducing you to important members of the national, international cannabis industry and subject matter experts. And I'm here with my co-host, Destiny Nicole Blanco. And my name is Dimitri Downing. And we have with us a special guest from Yogesh Jam. Tani. That's correct. Did I get it? Yes. Yogesh it right. Jamtani. The, when you're doing all this international stuff, all these German names, I just, I just give up. Uh. You know, I think Indian names are, are complicated. No, no, the German <laughs> names. The German people are complicated people. Uh, Indian I'm, names, yeah. Not uh, too bad. I'm Indian myself. But Filipino. Like, she's Filipino. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks Filipino Destiny. and... Mexican. Well, Mexican. 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 Filipina. Yeah. I'm Indian. You said I'm Indian? Columbus Indian. Columbus Indian. Like Columbus you're defined. You're real Indian. Indian. I don't know. You're, I, well, I mean, what is the real Indian? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're, we're Indians? Yeah, because they were looking for the East Indies. Yes. So they had the word before. Uh, but but do, did Indians self-name themselves I mean, Indies? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was in Buffalo, United States, for like five years. <laughs> I'm in <a> Buffalo. <laughs> uh, and and these, these white friends of mine, I, so on Thanksgiving, they couldn't find Indians, so they called us. <laughs> so, oh, gosh. <laughs> Wait, but not that is. And we were fed on Thanksgiving. But <laughs> there's never, 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 never a dull moment on meat unshackled. So we always try to identify truth. Truth. The Indies were named the East Indies prior to 1500 by who? Who named it the East Indies? Who named India India? Alexa. India is was. Uh, hey Alexa. Alex, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, before like like thousands of years ago, huh. what's the the name that? Oh, it India, it used to be, it, it used to be um, Hindustan, and I think after the British went, they named it India. So, Hindus, okay. Hindus. Okay. It comes well, from Hindus, and it's the river Indus, so essentially any, anybody past the Indus is an Indian. Okay. There's a river right by the Himalayas, river in the Northwest Corridor, and as soon as you look into the continent, so the name anybody Indi- past that river is an Indian. That's essentially how that came about. I should probably just shut up now. Uh. <laughs> Stick with cannabis. <laughs> Geography and those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we're here with uh, an extraction expert, and extraction is such an exciting element of, of the cannabis space, you know, something that's become very popular and very important. And y- you own Buffalo Extraction Systems. I'm, I'm the CEO. I'm the, the co-founder, the one of the co-founders. One of the co-founders. Yes. Uh, how did you start in cannabis? Um, it was just uh, four of our friends. We got together in 2018 at the CWCB in, uh, um, in America. And, and uh, Mike, get your mic a little closer. So uh, that, can you hear me now? Yeah, that, yeah, just yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, CWCB conference, uh, CWCB conference, and we are four roommates f- who went to university together at the State University of New York in Buffalo. Buffalo, oh, and, and we were very thoughtful. We came up with the name <laughs> in yeah, like five minutes. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo extracted system. Yes. So, so we were delving into different business models, and we realized at that point, hey, that uh, capital equipment is one thing that not many people are focusing on, and there is a huge gap around compliances around the regulations, how these instruments are to be planned, structured, and coming from an engineering background, we thought that was a good starting point. So we did, did a litmus test. We sold a couple of machines in America, designed them ourselves, got them at facilities we knew. So in the beginning, essentially, we were designing ourselves, but we were getting it made for the best in the industry. Uh, very recently, six months ago, we got acquired by a bigger company called Cybernetic. Okay. So That's now we own a manufacturing facility as opposed to just being on the design side of things. So we help build our turnkey solutions. So as soon as your wet flower is out, uh, we'd help you from pre-processing solutions to extracting the equipment to getting it into isolate, distillate, broad spectrum or whatever is it that your final market requires. So how long, so you said 2017, 2018? 18 is when we started. And, and you guys are headquartered out of? Arkansas in the beginning. That's one of my co-founders who's based in Arkansas. Arkansas? Yes, Bentonville. And, and, and now, now the, the company, the manufacturing center is based where? So we've got one uh, manufacturing center in Charleston. Charleston. South, Charleston, South Carolina. We've got three in India. Three in India. Yes. And that's where we are doing most of the manufacturing. Mm-hmm. 
we do have other hubs like in South Africa where we store spa spares and uh, services and we have engineers who would cater to the local clientele there. And you're shipping worldwide? At the moment, we are. We have a presence in four continents. So it's Four yeah. continents? I How mean, I'm leaving Europe. How many this countries? This is my first time in Europe. Um, we're doing around, so we have presence in around 12 countries. So anything in Mexico? Mexico, we are we're having dialogue and conversations. Okay. But we are scheduled to go to Mexico and Colombia September itself. So we hope to get some good business and see how the industry is going on there. Yeah, no, I mean, Mexico is going to be big. I'm just wondering because right now there's a lot of illegal extraction going on in Mexico. Oh, no, no, no. we're not part of that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, you but, see. But, but nobody knows. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I know some big companies I mean, in the United States who are selling extraction, yeah. million-dollar extraction yeah. equipment to Mexico. Yeah. I'm like, where is that I going? Mean, you, you don't want an Indian across the Atlantic doing anything illegal. <laughs> is there some sort of barrier or something? No. You it's see like a brown guy across the Atlantic doing something illegal, it's very wrong. It's like, oh, it's like, gosh. It's a great divide or something. I'm trying to figure out what else. Um, so, so we can talk a little bit about extractions and how extractions work and what kind of extraction machines you guys have. But, um, And you're based where, you said? Um, I'm I'm based in Charleston. So you're in Charleston. Charleston. As well. I mean, I shuttle. Well, I travel a lot. Yeah. I try to be there five to six months a year. Okay. So your your home is Charleston. Yes, for now. Okay. I mean, it's just it's just uh, like some people like to know the geographical proximity where they can come. Home, home is India. Home is India. Home is India. Home is India. Um, I'm from. Um, I grew up in the north, uh, but I'm positioned in the south at the moment. Right. So, I mean, you'd say I'm a North Indian staying in South India. We do have a divide there as well. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we do need to get some subject matter experts on the Indian cannabis legalization and the status of it, market structure okay. on, on our show one day. So if you have a good recommendation as to somebody that we can talk to, please oh, For please sure. We can get us. a panel going on there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, that, yeah, that would actually be, be nice. great. So tell us about Buffalo Extractions and what, what makes your equipment the best and special and, and why you guys do what you do. Okay. Um, I think the biggest uh, uh, gap in the industry at the moment is the unawareness. I think where we come in is uh, it's, it's, it's a piece of equipment doing technology and we're doing extraction. I think uh, there are very few companies out there who are following the right compliance standards, especially when it comes to EU GMP, CE, ASME. What's um, EU GMP? Uh, these are good manufacturing practices <laughs> that are followed in Europe. And the GMP again? Yes, yes. <laughs> so she I thought it was a word. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 she, she was trying to pronounce it. <laughs> it's okay. So it stands okay. for... So it, it essentially, I mean, these standards have to be followed, especially in countries like Europe now. Uh, all countries in Europe, how they have the standards out for the kind of extraction technology from uh, as soon as the crop comes out for drying, for processing, pre-processing, extraction. The standards are very complex. Mm -hmm. And I think companies who would be following that in a very robust way, I think our in instruments are very robust in nature. It's better ROI. We follow the compliance standards. We are a completely a green organization with a very low carbon footprint. So I think those are some sustainable advantages we have over other uh, um, equipment manufacturers. Mm -hmm. But hey, I can be talking sales, but I see where we really come in is taking accountability and we hate white elephants. Mm -hmm. To take accountability and to be with the client till their first batch is out. So I think that's where we come in and we take greenfield projects. Hey, we'd, we'd had pieces of land and not just equipment. So we help the clients all the way from facility design, from their user requirement specification mm -hmm. formulations, helping them build the facility if they want, mm -hmm. putting the equipment in there, and making sure that we are with them until their first patches out. So I think accountability is and a robust system and compliances would be my advantages. Yeah, we love that word here at Mita. Ah. <laughs> Accountability. You, you know, that, that's really smart because you offer, you, you guys have expertise that's much broader than just extraction. Yes. And why not share that and give that away? And then, you know, they obviously in turn, with respect, buy your product, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right? Absolutely. And it's a positive feedback loop. I mean, these are things that we have realized while being in the industry. In the is, industry that called, is that called a positive feedback loop? I think so, yeah. Is that That's how you build capabilities, mm. as I may call it. <laughs> you build capabilities by taking feedback. Yeah. Amen. And, and that's where we are at now. Positive feedback. Look, I'm going to do... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, look, I went to Boston University. I went to UVA Law School. But I, I, I'm a pretty smart guy. But I, I, I'm learning... I'm forgetting a lot. I'm learning a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, this cannabis industry is so complex. I'm trying to pick up so much. I seem to be leaving a lot behind. Yeah, but no, it's, not called, it's not called forgetting. It's unlearning and learning a lot. Here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but, but I haven't used the word positive feedback loop so for a while, so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to Google so that. So we take feedback, and I think the, the, the kind of unawareness, it's, it's our clients that told us, hey, we don't know this. 
so we don't know no, we don't give no for an answer and we'll find out the answer for them and give them those services right so that's where we are at i would say we are a turnkey solution provider in the cannabis space where we help them all the way from when their crop is out to their final product uh, which is with, with with which they can go to market so um we have two extraction technologies carbon dioxide and cryogenic ethanol those are the two uh major areas of technologies we focus on those are the mostly runs f- let's say co2 is highly selective used by research institutes there are other variables which i can get into details as to comparing one over the other but i can send you details and uh we can run some videos around that i don't want this to be a technical spiel and we try to no, sell you machines no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no we, we want to learn about you know wait wait it is. And, and, sure. and, and the most important people watching our, our videos are trying to understand the industry, trying to understand who's who and who they mm-hmm. reach out to. Cool. You know, so they're trying to put a face with the company. So that's the most important thing. Yeah. How, pe- how, how people get in touch with you, et cetera. Okay. Um, car- you're, you're, she's more familiar with extraction than I am. Cryogenic. Cryo, cryo- Cryogenic ethanol. So freezing, right? Freezing. Yeah. Freezing. So essentially, uh, it's like a conventional solvent extraction where in, in the back in the day, herbs used to be extracted by just dipping them into ethanol yes. and after a certain point in time say a 4 hour bad cycle the uh, all the molecules from the herb will translate into the ethanol mm-hmm. and then it's distilled further to get the juice out and use those chemical molecules in either medicines or traditional medicines or even say um recreational stuff mm-hmm. for cannabis back in the day should be manual what we have done is using cryogenic ethanol we dip the temperature of ethanol to a minus 40 degrees that makes it more efficient it extracts more juice out of the crop and it is much faster and it is much robust so the loop would essentially be looking like hey we would chill the temperature down of ethanol to minus 40 mix it uh, with the biomass that is your cannabis um, marijuana or hemp biomass uh, with a half hour batch cycle further distill it down and then give you the crude oil which can then be further extract to extracted to your isolates mm-hmm. distillates broad spectrum or full spectrum oils And, and, and cryogenic extract was being done in what industries before cannabis? So um, all of these extractions, I mean, I, I say this to my clients, this cannabis is another crop. So any herb mm-hmm. or essential oil you think can be using ethanol as a solvent, which helps uh, extract biomass, m- chemical molecules into substances that can be further used in either medicinal, recreational or right. nutraceutical industries. So it has been used for any herbal industry, you say turmeric, ginger, curcumin, lavender uh, or, lavender or uh, uh, skeletium, uh, moringa. So any of these herbs could be using this technology. And same goes for CO2. CO2 is carbon dioxide, which is just another solvent like ethanol. It just has a special property where at a certain temperature and pressure, it would flow like a liquid but penetrate like a gas. And that's where, uh, that's where the selectivity comes in, that it comes into use of extracting, but mm-hmm. without any, it's a non-polar solvent. So the filtration is easy, and it's good for research where people are trying to do recipe management and come up with different parameters of different kind of cannabinoids they want to extract, terpene extraction, and all sorts of stuff that can be used using the carbon dioxide technology. Is there another way to do it then with, with, with your, your system and not ethanol? Um, I mean, there's solvent-less extraction nowadays. Yes, because I know yeah, that's what I actually yeah, prefer. Yeah, and there is, there is, in fact, a gentleman here we, we could extract using just vapor. So mm-hmm. uh, these are just four different ways. I mean, you could say a solvent-less butane extraction. Yes. There is cryogenic ethanol extraction and carbon dioxide extraction, supercritical fluid extraction. Four ways, the end product is essentially the same. It's just different standards, better processes, and what your business model is will decide what type of equipment you're going to use. Okay. So we'd essentially do a requirement elicitation uh, session with the clients to recommend them with the right technology and not just, you know, just uh, use a cookie cutter model that, hey, I'm going to sell you this and you're going to sell this out. So it really depends on what the goal of the business is and That's where great. the uh, extract is to be used. Take the time to understand the yes, their course. needs. There's not, I, I, I know enough about every little, I know a little bit about every single subject in cannabis. And what I do know so far is that anyone who watches this who he listens to you talk about extraction, listens to your level of expertise and competence, is going to call you first. Absolutely. They're going to be, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> gonna be like, just, it's just you had hey, me at hello. I'm the business yeah. guy. I'm not, the, not even the technical guy in my company. I'm the business guy who, who talks at layman terms, tries to understand the yeah. consumer, and see the best solutions that we can offer. No, you yes, have the right I approach like to that. the whole turnkey solution to help out in other aspects, and your level of expertise is, is clearly extraordinary. And you have... 
uh, and I, I don't know the difference between all the different extraction uh, types and what they mean, you know, but that's why if I was going to get into extraction, if I was going to do a vape pen company, I'm going to call somebody like you to make sure I'm working with the right equipment. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and if I knew the right equipment, I'd be running my own extraction company. I'd be telling people, this is how it works. My name is Yogesh. No, but Buffalo Extraction Systems, you guys have... Uh, uh, you guys have uh, offices in the United States. Any offices in Europe? Uh, not really. This is my first time to Europe at the ICBC. Mm -hmm. So um, I think after this uh, expo, we will be deciding on saying whether we've made a good uh, point of uh, contact, uh, good relationships, good strategic partnerships around here. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see how Europe unfolds for us in the few next few months. Excellent. So awesome. how do people get in touch with you? Where do people find you? Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to give you my email and my phone well, number. They'll see it here. We're putting them there. We'll put it here. They're going to click your face. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, this is Yogesh. And, uh, and you're also on LinkedIn, right? <laughs> yes, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Buffalo Extraction Systems. We can just Google me, LinkedIn me, Buffalo email me. Okay, cool. Well, we'll hand out all your information. It'll be on the, in the digital format and stuff. So, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're still in Berlin. And uh, where will we see you again? What's your next conference? Um, I mean, for a pint tonight? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 the after party. Oh, a pint. I like uh, that. I'm, I'm, I'm going for that expo in, Pretor uh, in Johannesburg in South Africa in September. Oh, okay. See, we did, I South didn't even Africa. know about that one. Well, we might pop up, meet a podcast. Yes, for sure. You guys got to be there. You're going to be at MG Impact or MG BizCon? MG BizCon. We're going to be there at MG BizCon. Yeah. We're going to have a booth. booth there. I don't, yeah, I don't have a booth number yet. I think we're still okay. in the selection process. But we should have a booth. We'll come. We'll walk up and come visit you. Absolutely. Looking All forward right. to it. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Thank Pleasure. you so much for having me. <laughs>